Yo guys, what is going on? Lucky here and welcome to the third and final part of the secret tanks you might not know about yet miniseries. And before I'm gonna start, I just want to clear up that this is indeed the final episode and after this you won't see a miniseries like this ever again on my channel. Since some of you didn't really like the collect baity sense the thumbnails have. But I still want to finish the series since I simply can't leave something uncompleted cause otherwise my OCD will go completely mad. So if you're here and you're about to unsubscribe because you can't handle the collect baity sense. Please don't because I've heard your calls after this video. I'm done with it. The list will be complete and I'll be going back to focus on the good old trusted main content that you're all used to. But if you really enjoyed this mini series and you're here to see what the last remaining nations have to offer you in their hidden files, then stick around until the end of this video because today I'll be covering the last two remaining nations, which are the United States and the United Kingdom. So basically, I decided to merge these two together so I don't have to make yet another episode of this mini series since I want to keep it as compact as possible. And also, don't worry, you're not missing out potential Chinese, Japanese, French, Czech, Polish or Italian secret vehicles since they simply either don't have any or they are not really worth mentioning. So guys, with that all said, hope you enjoyed the last episode and let's dive into the world of the secret tanks for one last time. So guys, then here we are starting at the very first secret hidden tank of the day from the American nation is the T-71 CMCDP. And I guess apart from the name, I guess this vehicle is exactly the same as the T-71. But is that also the case? Well, let's take a look at the stats quickly. Yeah, that kind of looks similar to the regular T-71. So not really the most unique tank to start with, but I guess it was definitely worth mentioning because this T-71 CMCD has got a P behind its name, which I think might be the indication that this might be a premium version of the T-71 that Wargaming might release in the future as a new tier 7 premium American light tank. I also pulled that conclusion because the name of this tank is written in gold and as you might already know, premium tanks names are also always written in gold. So I guess that's my biggest bet that the T-71 CMCDP is gonna be a new tier 7 American premium light tank that Wargaming might release into the future. Other than that, I have no clue what else it could be. But overall, I think, yeah, it's not really that special, actually. It's just literally a copy-paste of the T-71, but in a premium version. So, I don't know who would be interested in buying this, because you can simply go over to the tech tree and get this vehicle for absolutely free. But, hey, I guess maybe there might be some guys who like to train their American light tank crew on the lower tier. I don't know, I guess it's up for them to decide. But anyways, let's just move on to the second secret tank that the American nation has to offer for us. So moving on to the next tank and oh boy stuff is about to get a lot interesting already because here we have the T95 E6 and the T95 E6 is a tier 10 elite American medium tank that is currently just sitting in the hidden game files doing nothing actually. So let's actually take a look at the description to see what it actually is. So some military analysis deemed the experimental tank of the T95 series to be undergunned. In order to increase the tank's firepower, a new heavier turret designated T96 was to be mounted on the hull. This would allow replacement of the 105 gun with a 120mm gun. However, development proved unsuccessful and the project was cancelled on July 7th, 1960. Only one dummy vehicle was built. So that is very interesting. This is basically a medium tank that is pretty well armored and with a 120 millimeter gun. That's actually the first time that we see a 120 millimeter gun on a medium tank in World of Tanks. So is it gonna perform any good? Well let's take a look at it. So take a look at the firepower and oh boy that looks disgusting. It has a 400 alpha damage which is that average for a 120 millimeter gun but for medium tank purposes that is slightly above average. It has 258 millimeters of penetration with a 7.67 second reload and up until now this gun really reminds me of the T110 E5 gun. But nevertheless, let's just continue on with the stats. That's third traverse of 37 degrees a second, which is pretty decent, pretty good for a medium tank. That's 9 degrees of gun depression, 20 degrees of elevation, which is pretty nice, which means that this thing doesn't really bother fighting on hills. It has 1.92 second aim time with 0.36 dispersion, which is pretty that average for a 120mm gun. But it has 3,129 stock DPM. 
Ooh, that is really, really dirty, if you ask me. I mean, the only place where you see this kind of DPM is in the Russian medium tanks, but those tanks are really known for their devastating DPM. So, first crash of the gun is pretty damn good, especially for a medium tank. Okay, you know what? Let's move on to the survivability. Let's see how that is. So, this thing has 2,150 hit points, which is actually slightly above average for medium tank purposes. It has 114 millimeters of frontal home armor, but look at the sloping. That is pretty damn well sloped. Of course, the lower plate isn't as well sloped as the upper plate, so I guess the lower plate is probably going to be a weak spot. But 140 millimeters at this kind of angle, I think that's going to result in around 200 millimeters effective, which is pretty darn nice for a medium tank. But the side armor is trash with only 50 millimeters, and the rear armor is even more trash with only 19 millimeters. So this thing has 9 degrees of gun depression. Well, let's see if it can actually fight on hills. And holy hell, it can! 342 millimeters of frontal turret armor. That is absolutely insane. I mean, even most Russian heavy tanks don't have that thick of a frontal turret. But I guess it does have the classic American weak point, this massive commander's cupola. I do not think that this cupola is 342 millimeters thick. So I think that's obviously going to be a weak spot. And I think this is also looks like it's going to be a weak spot. It's quite flat right here. And about the sides, I don't really know about that. This could either be 50 millimeters thick or 342. If it's 50 millimeters thick, then the sides obviously are going to be pretty damn weak. But talking about the sides, it's 76 millimeters thick on the sides, 50 on the rear. So up until now, it has a good gun, it has good armor. Is it any fast? Well, let's take a look at it. It weighs 50 ton, has a 750 horsepower engine, which results in a specific horsepower to ton ratio of 18, which is okay for medium tank purposes. And of course, very nice for heavy tank purposes. And up until now, this tank is looking more like a heavy than a medium tank to me. But let's move on. It has 56 km power top speed forwards, 20 backwards, which is pretty nice. And it has a 47 degrees a second hold reverse, which is also very, very nice. Then consumer wise, it's okay for its size, I guess. I guess it's kind of average for medium tanks, so nothing to complain about there. Spotting, it has 410 meters view range, which is pretty close to even some tier 10 light tank view range. So that is absolutely insane. So I guess this Capola does have its purpose, maybe after all. And the signal range of 745 is that average for any tier 10 tank. So yeah, the T95E6, uh, what do I know about it? How could you get it? Well, the T95E6 actually was one of the tanks that you could choose for participating into the arms race event, which I guess was a Clan Wars event a few years ago. And if you participated in that event with your clan and you got a certain amount of points, you could choose different rewards. For example, the M60, you could choose the 121B, and you could also choose the T95E6. But I guess out of the M60 and the 121B, I think I've never seen this tank on the battlefield anywhere before. While I have seen the M60 and I have seen the 121B a couple of times before. So I think this is probably one of the rarer tier 10 Clan Wars reward tanks. But I don't really get it. Why would people choose the 121B or the M60 over this thing? Because on paper, this thing looks absolutely disgusting. Oh well, I guess those Clan Wars guys probably had their reasons. But anyways, this was all I had to tell you about the T95E6. Unfortunately, not really accessible for the average. Well, tanks player. So you know what? Let's just move on to the next secret American tank. So next up on this list, we have the M48 T54E2. Wow, that's a whole mouthful. And by the looks of it, this thing looks pretty similar to the T95E6 at the first glance. But is it as good? Is it even better? Well, the first thing that I can spot that might be a difference is the hull, because this hull really reminds me of a T110 hull. Like the T125 has this kind of hull, the T124 and the T123 also have the same kind of hull. But does this hull result in better armor? Uh, I don't know. You know what? Let's just take a look at the stats to find out. So gun-wise, this thing also uses a 120mm gun with 400 alpha damage, 258mm of penetration, but at 8.63 seconds reload, which is quite a bit longer than the T95E6. But further on, looking at the alpha damage and the penetration, I guess this is pretty much the exact same gun as on the T125 and the T95E6, but just with a slightly longer reload. Turret traverse speed is slightly faster than the T95. E6 with 39 degrees a second. It has 1 degree extra gun depression with minus 10 degrees and 20 degrees upwards, which that extra degree might come in handy at some situations, but not really that big of a deal. It has slightly worse aim time of 2.01 seconds, and it has slightly worse dispersion as well with 0.38. And of course, that bad reload reflects itself pretty well in that 2781 damage per minute it has. So first glance, the gun is pretty similar to the T95E6, but it kind of seems like a light version with longer reload, worse accuracy. 
Well, does this worst gun make up for the armor? Well, let's take a look at it. So hit points wise, it has less hit points than the T95E6. This thing has 2000 hit points. And hull armor wise, it's starting to look actually a little bit better because this thing has 152 millimeters of hull armor. But looking at the sloping, I don't know if that's going to be better effective. Since fair enough, V-spots right here might be more effective. But I guess if you shoot it right here in the middle, it might actually be even worse than the T95E6. But I don't know, who knows, I don't know if the armor model right here. But unlike the T95E6, I think this thing's got a much better lower plate. Because it's slightly rounded, as you can see right here. The T125E3 and E4 have the exact same design. And with this kind of lower plate, you kind of have to shoot to the left or either to the right in order to get the weakest possible effective armor so that might be a little pro at the frontal armor of this thing then the side armor is pretty trash with 76 millimeters at the side and 38 at the rear so hull wise this thing is slightly better than the t95 e6 but has it also got a better turret well let's take a look at it 203 millimeters thick at the front which is a lot worse than the t95 e6 but i guess to make up for it it has also a slightly smaller cupola which obviously is going to be a weak spot. Then at the side of the turret, it's 76 millimeters thick and at the rear, it's 50 millimeters thick. And looking at the sides, these sides look much better angled than on the T95E6, which might be a little pro as well. If you're turning your turret slightly to the left, slightly to the right, the enemies might not have that great of a shot on the side as they would have on the T95E6. So I guess armor wise overall, I would give this thing the upper hand over the T95E6. So is it any faster, is it any slower? Well, let's take a look at it. This thing is slightly heavier with 50 tons, but it also has a meteor engine of 825 horsepowers. But it has a worse horsepower to turn ratio of rounded of 16 and a half. And it also has a slightly worse top speed of 48 kilometers per hour forwards and 20 backwards. But it has a much better hull to reverse speed of 52 degrees per second. And the concealment is also a little bit worse because if you look at it, this thing has got a much bigger profile. So it kind of makes sense. Spotting range is again very good, but not as good as the T95E6 since this thing has 10 meters less view range at 400 and it has also slightly worse radio range but hey who the hell cares about radio range anyways so overall to sum it up I think this is kind of a light version of the T95E6 with slightly better armor but for that little armor increase it does sacrifice a lot of the gun and a lot of the mobility but unlike the t95e6 i really don't know where this tank is from my best guess is i think it was a very old clamorous war tank or it is going to be a future clamorous war tank maybe you guys know if you do please let me know in the comment section down below but i guess that was quite enough about the m48 t54e2 god still having troubles pronouncing that name so before i make any more fuck ups about the name let's just move on to the next secret american tank so next up, and also the last hidden tank of the Americans, it's the M60. So I've mentioned this one already a little bit when I was talking about the T95E6, because the M60 also was one of the options that you could choose as a reward for participating in the Arms Race Clan Wars event. And to be honest, if you just look at it briefly, it really just looks like a pattern with a massive headlight on the Maggot Madlet. But is it any better than the pattern? Is it any worse? Well, let's take a look at it. So gun-wise, unlike the T95E6 and the M48, this thing uses a 105mm gun, so therefore it has 10 less after damage, but it does have some better penetration though. But sadly enough for this thing, it does have a pretty poor reload of 8.44 seconds, but it does have a good turret traverse of 43 degrees per second. It has minus 9 degrees gun depression, 19 degrees gun elevation, 1.5 seconds aim time, which is very, very nice, and 0.30 to this Persian. So this thing is probably the most accurate tier 10 hidden American tank that we have seen so far. But I guess that also kind of makes sense as this thing is using a 105 and not a 120 millimeter. DPM is rather similar to the M48 at 2700. So let's take a look at the survivability. Is the armor as good? This thing has 2000 hit points and ooh, that does not look very good. It only has 93 millimeters of frontal hull armor, 73 at the sides and 25 at the rear. And taking a look at the slope, I don't think this armor is going to be effective at all because this is only 93 millimeters thick. I think probably most tier 8 vehicles won't have any struggle shooting straight through the front of the m60 but is the turret any better than well it also doesn't look that great especially if you compare it with the previous two tier 10 american special tanks since the m60 only has 177 millimeters of frontal armor and the turret is quite rounded and not that crazily angled as the previous two so i guess this turret is a lot easier to penetrate with most tier 10 guns and to top it all off it also have that massive 
commander hatch up top there, which I guess is easily penetrated by even some of the worst tier A tanks. So side of the turret, 76mm fix, 50 at the rear. So armor-wise, uh, I wouldn't give the M60 a price for that. So mobility-wise, let's see if it's any better than that. So it weighs 46 tons and has a 950 horsepower engine, which results in a horsepower to turn ratio of 20, which is the best we've seen so far. It has a 60 km power top speed and 23 km power top speed backwards, which is also the best we've seen so far. And it has a hull traverse speed of 54 degrees per second, which is also the best we've seen so far. So mobility-wise, big plus. This thing is probably the fastest out of the three. So concealment-wise, it's not that great because, yeah, just take a look at the silhouette. It's quite a tall tank, so it's obviously gonna get spotted a lot. But can it also spot a lot of enemy vehicles itself? Well, let's take a look at that and holy heck, this thing has 420 meters view range, which I guess is the highest possible view range you could possibly get in World of Tanks. And <laughs> just making a guess, I think this headlight kind of helps a lot with spotting tanks, of course, because holy heck, take a look at the size of the headlight. I think that if you put this thing on the beach, it can even act as a pretty nice lighthouse. But I guess it's just sad that Wargaming hasn't included an option into the game that you can actually turn on these lights. I mean, that would be pretty cool. Especially in combination with maybe night battles or something. I don't know. I guess I'm just dreaming a little bit too much. Let's just stick to the point here. So overall, the M60 is quite a unique tank, especially with that massive headlight in front of it. But it's not really that competitive, especially if you compare it with the T95V6 and the M48. And considering the M60 was an option together with the T95V6, I really can't imagine why anyone would pick the M60 over the T95V6 if he or she participated in that arms race event. But overall, I think it's a pretty troll and pretty cool looking tank, mainly because of the headlights. So yeah, that's pretty much everything I have to tell you guys about the M60. So this was also the last hidden tank of the American nation. So now let's move on to the British nation and see what the secret vault of the British nation has to offer for us. So first off, we have a very special tank, which I think some of you might have encountered on the battlefield, maybe sometimes here and there, is the Chieftain T90. And this thing is a tier 8 British premium medium tank that you could get for training it in for fame points, I guess, with some clan war shenanigans. Just to keep it short, it's a clan war reward tank. But is it any good? Well, let's take a look at it. So it uses a 90mm gun with 240 alpha damage and 202mm of penetration with a 7.96 second reload. The turret rotates at a speed of 37 degrees per second, which is pretty average for a medium tank. It has 10 degrees of gun depression, 20 of elevation, which is quite normal for British tanks, but actually actually pretty good for medium tank purposes overall. It has a 2.11 seconds aim time and 0.35 dispersion, which is again that average for a medium tank, but oh my god, 1.8 thousand DPM. This thing is definitely not gonna kill anything fast. And taking a look at this thing only gun-wise, I think there are a lot of better options at tier 6 if you want to get the max out of your gun. But, I don't know, maybe the rest of the tank is any good. Well, let's take a look at it. So the survivability, it has 1,400 hit points, which is quite average for a medium tank. It has 85 millimeters of hull armor at the front, 50 at the sides, and 25 at the rear. And the hull sloping does actually look quite good on the upper plate. So I guess that 85 millimeters of effective armor at the upper plate is gonna be rather effective in-game as well. But if you take a look at the lower plate, that doesn't look that great. So I guess that's gonna be a massive weakness of this thing. But is the turret any better? Well, let's see. The front of the turret is 254 millimeters thick, which is very nice. Also, if you set it at the angle of the turret, which is also angled in a pretty bouncy way. And actually, now looking at the turret, this turret kind of reminds me of the M48 turret that we've previously seen in this video. I don't know. Maybe the Brits took some inspiration from it or the American took some inspiration from the Brits. I don't know. It just kind of looks like it. But the reason why it looks like it is also because of this massive commander's hatch right here, which obviously is a weak spot. But moving on to the rest of the turret armor, has 88 mm of the sides, 50 at the rear. So armor-wise, I guess it's pretty good. Probably better than average for most tier 8 medium tank standards. But I guess if you were to compare it to the Centurions, it's pretty much nothing special. Well, maybe except for the better upper hull armor. So moving on, mobility, is it anything fast? Well, it weighs 50 tons, has a 750 horsepower engine, which results into a specific horsepower to turn ratio of 15, which is that average for any medium tank. Top speed of 42 km per hour, which is kind of on the slow side for medium purposes and the 15 km per hour backwards is also not really that great especially if you're peaking on ridge lines but 41 degrees per second hold reverse is again pretty damn decent so concealment this thing is also not particularly stealthy because it's quite a bulky tank still 
and therefore the camera rating also isn't that amazing. But spotting range, while you would maybe think that this thing results into a nice view range, but it only has 380 millimeters of view range, which is not great for tier 8, but it's also not really bad for tier 8. So there are obviously a lot of tanks at tier 8 with a lot worse view range. I'm looking at you, Russia. But then again, signal range 782, it's pretty good for a tier 8 tank. So yeah, the Chieftain T95, it has been in the game for quite some time, but sadly, just like most of these vehicles on this list, these tanks can only be obtained by the better players among us, and sadly, they are quite unreachable for the average World of Tanks player. But even though it's not particularly anything exceptional for tier 8, it definitely looks pretty cool, and I think it's pretty interesting to show tanks like this to you guys, even if you're like not that high tier, but you're still wondering what kind of secret tanks are out there. But anyways, enough about the Chieftain T95, let's move on to the next hidden British vehicle. So next up, we have the reason why you probably clicked on this video at the first place because this thing is in the thumbnail, of course. It is the almighty Chieftain. And oh my god, Wargaming, I keep saying this. Please, please put the Chieftain in the tech tree. It's not that hard. I mean, just put it as a second option from the Conqueror. So you could go from the Conqueror to the Super Conqueror or to the Chieftain. But oh my god, I'm so, so hyped for this thing. This thing has been in the game file for ages, but Wargaming simply hasn't done anything with it. Well, actually, that's not completely true because this thing is actually being sold on the Chinese server but then again they pretty much sell everything on the Chinese server and also I think this is actually one of the most expensive tanks that the Chinese server sells I think this thing is like $250 something like that absolutely crazy but for the rest of the World of Tanks community this thing is pretty much unused and it's just a sitting duck deeply hidden in the World of Tanks game files so again please walk in and just put this in the tech tree I would so much love to see this tank in action and it will be such a nice fry for people to grind the Churchill line again because oh my my god, I just... I absolutely love this thing. I mean, it looks pretty cool as well. Okay, <laughs> I'm getting distracted. Let's just move on to the Chieftain stats, see if it's anything good. So, the Chieftain uses a 120mm gun with 400 alpha damage and 270mm of penetration. Wow, that's pretty damn impressive for heavy tank purposes. It has a 7.91 second reload, which isn't particularly that long as well. It has a 31 degrees per second turret traverse, which is pretty average for a heavy tank. Minus 10 degrees gun depression, 20 degrees gun elevation, pretty much perfect for this kind of turret. It has has 1.44 seconds aim time, 0.31 dispersion, holy heck, this are indeed pretty insane aim stats and the only place you can find these aim stats elsewhere is maybe on the Leopard 1 or on the Gorilla 15. And the DPM of 3000 is also pretty damn nice. So let's move on to the survivability, is it any tough? Well, it has 2200 hit points, which is kind of on the low side for tier 10 heavy tank purposes. It has 85 millimeters of hull armor at the front, 50 millimeters at the side and 25 at the rear. And just taking a look at it, I think this thing has the exact same hull as the tier 8 Chieftain T95 that we've previously seen in this video. So for a heavy tank, especially at tier 10, that doesn't look that great. But on the other hand, if we go take a look at the turret, it's absolutely insane. 250 millimeters at the front and just take a look at the roundings, the shapes. This thing is pretty much bound city, except for the little commander's hatch right there. But the side of the turret is 140mm thick, the rear is 30mm thick. So as long as you manage to hide your hull and keep the front of your turret facing towards your enemy, this thing should be an absolute rich line beast. But is this rich line beast anything fast? Well, let's take a look at the mobility stats. This thing weighs 55 tons with a 750 horsepower engine, which is also in a horsepower to turn ratio of 13, which is pretty damn quick for a heavy tank. It has a top speed of 42 kilometer power forwards and 15 backwards, and that's 42 forwards is pretty damn healthy for heavy tank standards, but at 15 of power backwards is not that great especially if you're peaking rich lines but 41 degrees per second hold reverse is also pretty damn fast for heavy tank purposes so moving on to the concealment value it's a heavy tank of course it's probably not going to be that important since you're going to be close range anyways so let's just quickly skip on over that spotting range 390 meters view range which is pretty standard for tier 10 heavy tank purposes 782 meters signal range which is also quite standard for heavy tanks so all in all the chieftain looks absolutely insane i mean the gun is just Oh my god, I just can't wait to give this gun a try in game But of course having this kind of gun does sacrifice a lot of your whole armor because the whole armor is pretty damn trash Since it's exactly the same hull as a tier 8 premium British medium tank So I guess you do need to be careful with that if this thing actually manages to make its way into the game So overall if 
the Chieftain were to be in the game as an uh, alternative to the Super Conqueror, I think if you were to play it, you just need to make sure that you always hide your hull and that you just only show your turret and just completely evaporate your enemies with that 3000 DPM. So yeah, for the third time, I really hope Wargaming is going to put this thing into the game files on the British tech tree as an alternative tier 10 British heavy tank. And I think that I'm probably not the only one who thinks that way. So guys, if you want to see the Chieftain in the game, in the tech tree, please drop it in the comment section down below. Let Wargaming know what we want because, oh god, I really want this thing in the tech tree. Ah, but anyways, enough about the Chieftain. Let's just move on to the second and final hidden tank of this episode. So here we go guys, the very last secret tank of this episode and also the very last secret hidden tank of this mini series is the T95 Chieftain. Okay, that's interesting. So we had the tier 8 Chieftain slash T95. Now we have the tier 10 T95 slash Chieftain. Okay, I guess the British are very good with naming their tanks. But just looking at it, this basically looks like the Chieftain, which we have seen before, but with a different type of hull. Oh, wait a second. The Chieftain's hull was, I guess, the only weak spot. So if this hull is anything better, that will make the T95 Chieftain even a better version of the Chieftain. Okay, you know what? Let's just take a look at the stats, see if that's also the case. And yeah, just looking at the gun, it uses the same gun as the Chieftain. 400 after damage, 270 millimeters of penetration, but the reload is quite a bit longer. But for the further rest, the turret traverse, gun depression, and elevation angles look exactly the same. The accuracy and aim stats are a little bit worse and of course the damage per minute is also a little bit worse. So yeah, gun is not exactly what the Chieftain has. Let's take a look if it's anything more tough than the Chieftain. So to start off with 2000 hit points, which is quite on the low side for a heavy tank, just like the regular Chieftain. But if we take a look at the whole armor, it started to look already quite a little bit better because this thing has instead of 85 millimeters at the front, 114 millimeters at the front, but still 50 at the side and 19 at the rear. But take a look at the angling, the angling looks slightly less steeper, but then again, it is also slightly thicker. So I guess armor wise, this thing might be a little bit better frontally also because it's a flat plate. So you can more effectively angle this thing. But again, if you angle it too much, then your 50 minutes of side armor is going to pop up, which is also not particularly great. And yeah, the lower plate is quite big. It's also going to be pretty damn weak. So yeah, fair enough. It has a thicker hull, but I don't think it's going to be that more useful. So turret, I'm just going to skip on that part because it uses the exact same turret as on the normal Chieftain. So mobility wise, is it as fast as the Chieftain? Well, this thing is slightly lighter with 45 tons. It also has a slightly weaker engine with 560 horsepowers and of course a slightly weaker horsepower to turn ratio of only 12.44. But this thing is quite a bit faster though since it can go at 56 km per hour forwards and it can also go 2 km per hour faster backwards with 17 km per hour backwards top speed. And this thing also has a slightly worse traverse speed on the hull with 33 degrees per second. So yeah, let's just skip on the concealment, even though this concealment is quite a lot better as on the regular Chieftain, but I guess that's simply because the T95 Chieftain is slightly more lower profile. And spotting range, it has 10 meters of extra view range and the signal range is about the same. So yeah, the T95 Chieftain, what do I have to say about it? I guess this thing is probably a slightly better armored Chieftain hull wise and it also is quite a bit faster since it eliminates the 43 km per hour top speed cap right here. But is it worth it? Well, I don't really think it is since if you take a look at the gun the gun is just quite a bit worse as on the chieftain so i would much rather have the chieftain's original gun and just cope with the slightly slower top speed and the slightly worse hull armor than instead going with the t95 chieftain but again that's just me maybe you guys might have another opinion but yeah secondly i think the thing that you guys are most interested in uh where comes this thing from how do you get it and again i really don't have any clue so i can't really tell you guys my biggest guess is as i probably guess with most of the tank that this thing is just gonna be another tier 10 clan wars reward tank and i think probably one of the newer tier 10 clan wars reward tank because i'm pretty sure that this thing hasn't been released before in any clan wars campaigns yet so overall i think it's a pretty interesting vehicle even though for the clan wars guys who really can take tanks like this to the max but again i'm a much more fan of the regular chieftain myself but that's just my personal opinion i don't know what do you guys think of the t95 chieftain let me know in the comments down below so yeah that was everything i have to tell you about the t95 chieftain so that also wraps up the entire video of today so guys, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching and sticking through me through this entire mini-series that is three episodes long. And also, if you haven't seen the previous two episodes yet about the German nation and the Soviet nation, and you like this kind of episode, then I highly recommend to check them out. I'll put the links to those videos in the description of this video, so you can just click on them and give them a watch right now. And also, as I said in the intro, this is definitely going to be the very last episode of this mini-series, so I'm going to be completely done with this. So if you couldn't handle the clickbaity scent it had for some reason, don't worry, it's over.
over right now. So anyways, if you like this video, then make sure to drop a like down below. That would very much help my channel out. Also, if you're new to my channel and you like these type of videos, then make sure to smack that subscribe button so you will stay up to date with all my future content. And also, what do you think about these tanks? Are you just as hyped for the Chieftain as me? And do you really hope Wargaming is going to add them in the game as well? Please let me and also maybe let Wargaming know if they're watching this video by commenting it down below. And who knows, Wargaming might fulfill me and maybe our dream and put the Chieftain actually in the tech tree. Oh god, that would be so amazing. But anyways, guys, for now, all that's left for me to say is, as always, have an awesome day and I'll catch you guys later. Jack it up.